In the late 1950s, Israeli secret service, the Mossad, kicked off an operation to track down the world's most wanted men after World War II. Adolf Eichmann was in charge of organizing and carrying out the final solution that killed millions of Jews throughout Europe. After the war, he escaped to Argentina. On May 11, 1960, Eichmann was abducted near his home in Buenos Aires by a team of Mossad agents. They smuggled him to Israel to stand trial. Fifty years later, the Mossad decided to reveal some of the documents and artifacts from the secret mission. They are now being presented at the Museum of Jewish Heritage in Lower Manhattan in an exhibit called Operation Finale. It's actually the first time ever that the Mossad has let out things from its archives. Um, the collaboration began about six years ago. We started working with a curator who was a Mossad employee then. When the curator of the exhibit started working on this project, he went under the name of Avner A, keeping his full name a secret as Mossad employee. Today, he is known as Avner Avraham, our tour guide. The operation to capture Eichmann, he says, started with a love story. It starts with a love story between Sylvia Hermann. She grew up in a German uh, Christian family, but her father was a uh, half uh, Christian and half Jew. He was a Holocaust survivor. And she went to a German film festival. She met a, a young boy. She started dating with him. And he told her, my name is Nicholas Eichmann. He was Eichmann's son. Among the items on display is the camera used by the abduction team to take surveillance photographs, the goggles Mossad agents placed over Eichmann's eyes to interrogate and transport him, and the bronze casting of the gloves the Mossad agent used to grab Eichmann. Tzvi Malkin, the, the one that jumped on Eichmann, he didn't want to touch Eichmann in his hand, so that's why he bought uh, gloves. And it's very symbolic that it's the long hand of the state of Israel coming to Argentina and the capture Eichmann. Perhaps the most powerful artifact of the exhibit is the bulletproof glance booth in which Eichmann stood at his trial. As, as the man came up. The Eichmann trial aroused international interest, bringing Nazi atrocities to the forefront of world news. For the first time, Holocaust survivors began to share the darkest moments of their past. Sammy Steigman, a Holocaust survivor from Transistria, was a young child when the Nazis performed medical experiments on him. It was only after the trial that his parents began sharing their stories with him. The Holocaust survivors were empowered to take charge not only of their future, but also of their past. And uh, my parents did not talk about it. There was a veil of silence. Eichmann was found guilty on 15 counts, including crimes against the Jewish people and crimes against humanity, and was sentenced to death. On June 1, 1962, Eichmann was executed by hanging. The Nazi criminal remains the only person the state of Israel has sentenced to death. Now, Tal Heinrich joining us from our studios in Times Square. Tal, it's pretty incredible to see the footage again of that trial and your mention of the death sentence. And that is something that has only happened with that Nazi war criminal in Israel's history and really an issue that is still being debated in terms of a new law even today. But surprisingly enough, Nurit, even back then in Eichmann's case, it wasn't a consensus among the Israeli public that Eichmann should be executed. Right there in this exhibition, once you enter the video display, the very powerful one, the glass booth, you can see there hang on the wall a letter written by some Israeli intellectuals, including Leah Goldberg, the author, and also philosopher Martin Buber. Uh, Israeli Jewish philosophers and authors, they sent a letter to the then president of Israel, Itzhak Benzvi, basically asking to pardon um, Adolf Eichmann. Not that it's worthy of any kind of mercy, they say, but by executing Eichmann, killing him, they say, it will diminish from the Holocaust, the significance of the Holocaust. And here's the part of what they written there um, in this letter. Israel haters all over the world want Israel to fall for this trap. Carrying out a death sentence will let them say that we want to pay the Nazis back blood for blood. But, of course, the majority uh, of the Israeli society did support Eichmann's execution, and this is what happened. Also, by the way, another letter there in this um, uh, exhibition is a handwritten letter by Eichmann himself to the president of Israel asking to be pardoned. 
and um, he wrote there that he didn't feel guilty because he didn't, uh, he wasn't a responsible leader in his words. An, an incredible look back at a moment in history that really has never been replicated to that level in, in, in that situation. Tal Heinrich in New York, thank you very much for being with us, bringing us that story.